Hi, this is Dr. Josh Cooper, and in this video we're going to continue the topic of using objects in layers to create a more complex image. This one is inspired by another heart diagram, this one in my biventricular pacing talk where I show a heart with different colored areas corresponding to different parts of the heart being electrically activated by different things. And I'm going to show you how I created this layered effect. So let's start with uh, just the basic heart model, which I've shown in the last video roughly how to draw. And we're going to put, let's say, let's do two areas here, one over the right ventricle, one over the left ventricle. I'm going to go back to my home view, and we're going to use this uh, left curve on this curve feature, because I'm going to make a shape that's going to overlay this image. And I'm going to click around the border. We're going to fix this if, as we need to, but I'm going to click on the border here at different places around this right ventricle. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to fine tune it. Let's say I'll come up the septum, something like this, and let's say we're going to come over here and double click to close it. So how are we going to fine tune this? Number one, I'm going to right click on this image I just created and click on format shape. We're going to do a couple things. Number one, I don't want a border line, so I'm going to go to the line menu. And if this is, by the way, not visible, you click on the arrow to drop that down. I'm going to say no line. And let's say I want to make that yellow, like in the upper left picture. We're going to make the color uh, yellow. And here there's this transparency feature. We're going to make it partially transparent. Let's see what it looks like if it's 60% transparent. Yeah, maybe I want it a little darker than that, so let's make it maybe 40% transparent, something like that. Okay, <clears throat> so now I want to really get precise uh, tracing of the image uh, here, so I'm going to right click and do the edit points feature, and in fact I'm going to zoom in, so I'm going to go up to my view menu up top, and I'm going to go to zoom, and I'm going to zoom in, let's try 200% that should be good enough. And now because it's transparent, I can kind of see the border of the item underneath. And I can see, for example, that I'm kind of overreaching the border of the heart here. So I can change the trajectory of this a little bit to kind of match it. Sorry, that's better. And here as well, so I'm going to click on this dot and I'm going to kind of change the, the trajectory a little bit. And maybe this, yeah, that's where part of the problem is here. Maybe this needs to come in a little bit. Maybe this needs to be out a little bit. So we're just fine tuning it to suit us. If, if you need another, add another point. So you know what? This is not doing what I need it to do. You can always, you know, click in between, see how the icon changes to a little black uh, square with the plus sign in it, you can always just click and add another point. Or you can right click and delete that point if you want. So you're not restricted to the places where you clicked. You can modify any shape anywhere if what you did in the first place you don't like. I think I'm making it worse here. You can move it around. And again, when you add or move a point, it sometimes will change the trajectory of the adjacent points, which is annoying. Uh, let me bring this right up to the base of the septum. I want this to be a little bit more of a sharper corner like that. I want this to be kind of more straight across. Perhaps maybe I want this to track the valve a little bit. So maybe I'll add a point here to give it a little bit of curvature. Now that I added it, I have to fix this adjacent point again. And same with here, and same with here. All right, so there it is. I'm going to click on something else, and now that is nicely overlaid. What if I want the valve annulus to be uh, more visible, because I kind of am overlapping it as well? Well, I can just select that. It's sometimes hard to click on it, because this object is now over top it. So one trick there is to use a box to encompass it, and now I have that. And notice, by the way, the rings, I didn't have 
linked to the rest of the heart image. So there's three different components. There's the heart image, which is all joined together, grouped. And then actually these two ovals are separate items. I could have grouped them, but I anticipated that I wanted to bring this forward. So I'm going to right click on the border of this. If I right click on the yellow, then it's going to go away. Watch, it goes back to the overlaid object. So to get back to that oval, I'm going to uh, do that again. I'm going to right click on somewhere on the border. It can be the line or a dot. It doesn't matter. Right click and I'm going to go to bring to front and then now that annulus shows up in front of the object we just created. Uh, so let's quickly make our left ventricular overlay. I'm going to go back to the home view and I'm going to click on curve again and now I'm going to sort of do a complementary shape overlying. We'll, we'll fix this after. I'm try to make it approximate as much as possible to reduce how much fixing we have to do. Not bad. Maybe we'll kind of go around this valve curvature here and double click to end it. All right, right click, format shape, although it automatically that menu was already pulled up. I'm going to get rid of the line and I have to decide what color to make this. I can make it, well, let's see what we did an upper top over here is blue, a different blue. So maybe I'll make it you know that blue and I'll make it 40% transparent. Notice different colors may look better or worse at different levels of transparency. So maybe a yellow you need to be less transparent. Maybe a darker color overlaying a darker color you need to be more transparent. Um, I don't know. You decide what you think looks good. Here's 50%. It looks purple. I don't like it so much. So I'm going to do less transparent. Do that. Maybe 35%. Doesn't matter. As long as you're happy with it. All right, right click, edit points. And now we can kind of make this as perfect as we want. I'm going to bring this to a tighter angle here. Somebody with their motorcycles showing off outside. Terrific. Sorry, I keep shooting myself in the foot by moving an adjacent point. Maybe I'll just delete this point to see what happens. You know, enemy of good is perfect, although tell that to a perfectionist. Um, that's not bad. Again, yeah, just get rid of this. I mean, sorry, that's not what I meant to do. Let's fix this problematic point once and for all. All right. Oh, it's a little bit, a little bit of red showing through. That's all right. Okay. Um, oh, and we want that annulus to show up, so I'm going to surround it again. I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to bring it to the front, and there it is. And then I'm going to go back to the view, fit to window, to see the whole thing. So now we imitated that image. If you wanted to put other overlays like those areas of stimulation here, we can always go into our menu of shapes and we can find the little sun there. Where's the sun? There it is, sun. And remember, if I just click and drag, the proportions of this object are going to be dependent upon where I drag. If I want it to remain a perfect circle, I can hold the shift, I haven't let go of my left button by the way, I hold the shift key down and now it keeps the length, the height and width identical so it's a symmetrical object. And then I let go of the mouse button first and then of the shift key. And then this object, I can format the shape, I can make the color, the fill color, that's the fill yellow, I can make the outline uh, black, that's a striking combination I find. You can change the thickness of the line, although that encroaches upon the color. So you can do that. And um, we'll talk about animations in another video in the future. I'm going to control C, control V, copy paste, copy paste, you know, and then you can overlay 
one thing over another. Maybe I'll just finish by quickly putting one of these pacemaker wires in here. We're going to do another curve. And this time we're not going to want any fill. So let's say we're going to do this. Click, 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 click. Double click to end it. I'm going to increase the width of this line. I want to make it gray. You can decide what shade gray you want. Maybe that's too dark. Maybe we'll do a lighter shade of gray. And I'm going to right click on this. You can now edit these points and say I want it to come through the center of the valve. Fine. I accidentally curved it too much at the end. Fine. You can change the trajectory. Whatever you want to do. Um, and if you want, let's say you do an animation and you're going to have this appear and you want the pacemaker lead and the heart to show up at the same time, you can click on the heart, hold control, click on the lead. You want the valves to show up at the same time, you can click on the valve annuli and you can right click on any one of these objects so you don't deselect them. And you can group here. I think control G does the same thing. They're now grouped. Um, but I did what this, these things ah because I grouped them it also brings it to the front that's what just happened so if I want the overlays that we just drew to stay on top I can then right click on this group and put send to back notice that when since I grouped these the oval annulus on each side is now underneath uh, underneath layer compared to the overlays. So I think that's why I originally didn't have them grouped because I wanted the red to be in the back but the ovals to be in the front so you can't group them in that way. Um, so I'm going to undo what I did and then if you wanted things to appear at the same time you can animate them simultaneously rather than grouping them and animating the whole object all at once. Alright, I think that's enough for this video and we will move forward.